Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The former WBO champion Joseph Parker is set to make what could be a pivotal career decision. So he is holding a summit meeting this week with his advisors and also his promoter David Higgins. Higgins has just got back from the UK and US where he's held meetings to canvas options and potential long-term deals for Joseph Parker. So we're looking at potential long-term deals with the likes of ESPN and Top Rank, potentially Eddie Hearn's Matchroom uh, through DAZN and Sky Sports, or a third option for Joseph Parker is remain uh, essentially an independent. Fight by fight deals go where the money is and potentially that could be an option that they look to explore further because his value is not exactly sky high at the moment. The New Zealander has not fought since December 2018 where he had a tune-up victory over Alexander Flores. His uh, last real fight in terms of uh, a stern test was against Dillian White in July 2018. So it's the best part of a year now that he hasn't been in what many would deem a competitive fight. He lost that that fight to White, his stocks dipped in the division, and prior to that he met Anthony Joshua in uh, March 2018, and he lost to Joshua by decision, and also his belt in the process. So Joseph Parker is trying to rebuild, get himself back to a place where he can contend for a title. Can he get there? It remains to be seen, but David Higgins is going to present him all the options, and they will work through this and make a decision from there. So Higgins has been talking to the New Zealand media. You can see on screen here, Summit Meeting will decide Joseph Parker's heavyweight future. This is from stuff.co.nz. Also, other New Zealand outlets have been reporting these uh, very same uh, sort of similar statements from Higgins. New Zealand Herald is another one. But in terms of Joseph Parker, what he is saying... So we'll skip past this first bit. So they're holding a summit meeting this week. He's been in the UK, the US, uh, surveying the options. Uh, and they are outlined here as I've just gone through. So US is ESPN and top rank. Eddie Hearn, you know, through Sky and DAZN. That could mean fighting on both sides of the Atlantic or stay independent. So Higgins says... This week or next fortnight will be a pivotal period in terms of Joseph Parker's career and some major decisions are going to be made, including the possibility of a restructure. There are competing interests trying to get a strangled hold on the sport, competing interests with very big resources behind them, and that puts Joseph Parker in a very interesting position. And it goes on to say here, Higgins intimated one outfit courting Parker wants an answer by Friday, adding to the pressure of making the right decision. And then he continues, uh, Joseph is one of the later cabs on the rank in terms of committing longer term to one of those major players probably the most potential. He is yet to show what he is capable of. He's the youngest of the bigger names and he has had a bit of a run of bad luck. I don't think we have seen the best of Joseph Parker. In economic terms, he's an undervalued asset. He wants a second run at the world title and unification. The question is, how is he going to do it? All options will be placed on the table at the summit meeting. Imagine if we don't commit yet and we go and knock out Chisora at the O2 Arena in London on Sky Sport globally. Suddenly Joe's stocks go through the roof and the world's his oyster. We could legitimately call for a rematch with White and the sort of offer for long-term deals might double in value. But a loss to Chisora could be disastrous. Okay, this is just the story here. Uh, I'll always be involved, and this is uh, commenting about what a restructure might mean for Higgins. Uh, I'll always be involved. That's not the issue here. If there's a restructure, then the roles might be redefined, but there might not be. There's no ego here from me. It's purely a rational and analytical exercise. So that was David Higgins talking to stuff.co.nz. Okay, so in terms of a restructure and that sort of stuff, I'll just sort of start there because uh, for some context, Joseph Parker at the back end of 2012 signed a long-term deal with uh, promoter Duco Events. His contract has been up. They've been renegotiating a deal. David Higgins told me this um, a number of weeks ago that the contract was coming up at the end of March. They were putting something, you know, a new agreement in place, etc. And at the same time, the co-promotional deal that they originally signed with uh, ESPN and Top Rank, which would have had Top Rank having some rights over Parker fights, 
in the US, should he fight in the US, that was also coming to an end. So we're at a point now where Joseph Parker can decide the next step. So his advisors, his management team that uh, comprises of a former um, High Court judge, but also uh, members of his family. So it's not just Kevin Barry or David Higgins that are in his ear here. So they will consider these options, no doubt. And the big question is, what should he do and where should he go? I think from some of the statements from David Higgins, it kind of indicates to me at least that potentially they could actually look to stay independent for now because his stock is not at an all-time high. It's probably the lowest it's been um, since he really sort of started to come up on the scene and make some make a real name for himself and get some buzz behind his career. The two losses in 2018, it's sort of, he's, you know, slowed down on the the buzz and hype front. Obviously, he hasn't been fighting as often. It's, a, what, the best part of a year now since a competitive fight against Dillian White. And he has no scheduled fight at this current time. He was potentially going to fight Derek Chisora, which would have been this weekend on April 20 at the O2. But that fell through after Joseph Parker and his team, David Higgins, insisted they needed the adequate time for a training camp. And uh, they felt that the... Uh, time that was going to be allotted to them was being whittled down and they thought that was a, a bit of a, a move to to try short change him on his preparation time so they said thanks and no thanks and you heard Derek Chisora's name mentioned in the story uh, from David Higgins that is one of those sorts of fights that they think that if they can beat Chisora they're right back in the mix and I do agree to some extent it's one of these fights where Joseph Parker would go in I think for many people a firm favorite Derek Chisora you know a slew of losses on his record but he is uh, at a certain level he's around top 20 top 25 for most people some people have him higher than that although whenever he's really stepped up to world level he has been beaten and we saw him knocked out pretty brutally by Dillian White back in December so Chisora is of a certain level has a certain value and he can get Joseph Parker a certain way back. It's certainly a step up from the Alexander Flores fight, which was never the greatest fight, but it was a win nonetheless for Joseph Parker, who since then has taken an extended break. And uh, David Higgins has been talking about that. He's in very good condition, has been uh, working out in the gym, posting some good results. But uh, we haven't really seen much of him, uh, aside from some holiday snaps, gym work, and there is no fight currently on the horizon. But ESPN and Top Rank, that is an option for Joseph Parker that obviously there could be some appeal there. There is a stable that is building with Tyson Fury at the head of it. Kubrat Pulev is in that stable. There's a number of other guys that are coming through, like the likes of Sonny Conto. You've got Guido Vianello. But those two, they're more names for the future. You also have Bryant Jennings, uh, Dillian White. There had been talks that he would uh, potentially sign up with ESPN and Top Rank on some sort of co-promotional deal or an outright deal. It really depends. There has been no word on what's happening there. Oscar Rivas, they have an option on his next fight. So there's a number of guys who are within the at least top 20 or top 30 that are part of that stable. And uh, ESPN is really pouring some money and exposure into heavyweight boxing at the moment. And Tyson Fury is the sort of jewel in their crown. And having Joseph Parker within ESPN and top rank, that certainly increases the likelihood that he could get a Fury fight. Fury on a multi-year, multi-fight deal, uh, depending on the fights and the matchups, could earn him a boatload of money. And if Joseph Parker goes on to a similar sort of long-term deal with them, no doubt he would be quite well remunerated. Also, within the United States, it wasn't mentioned in the story, but that doesn't mean that Higgins didn't sort of seek out and have a meeting with PBC. They have about a dozen heavyweights, Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz, FIA Jagba, Joe Joyce is in that stable too, about a dozen guys, uh, different stages of their careers. There would be fights for Joseph Parker there. One fight many people have sort of said would be another, um, probably similar to a Chisora level fight, would be a Charles Martin fight. You could get that in the PBC. He's on the roster. Andy Ruiz Jr. is there too. A number of guys he could fight and have good fights with. Uh, also, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom through uh, Sky and DAZN, so he could fight potentially on both sides of the Atlantic. A number of guys have signed up to co-promotional deals. Uh, more recently, you've had uh, Sergei Kuzman, Philip Hergovich, Alexander Usyk. These are some of the names that uh, could potentially fight in both the UK and the US. Michael Hunter just recently signed on to Matchroom USA. There would be fights out there for him. 
And potentially, if Dillian White stays with Eddie Hearn in the sort of sky in the UK platform, well, maybe a rematch with White could be on down the line, depending on results. But Joseph Parker needs a good win or two to really put himself back in the conversation. And it is kind of very important what he does next, because that will influence where he goes and how he can position himself within the division. And the other thing he could do is stay independent. His stock isn't sky high in the division right now. And if he has a fight against a Derek Chisora on a one-off fight basis, then maybe that could boost his stocks and boost his value in the division and ultimately the deal that he could potentially get for a longer term deal. Maybe it will be a series of one or two fights here and there. There are many different things that he can do, but he's definitely not at a point in his career where you know the interest is so high that people are falling over themselves with a $100 million deal. It's not that kind of deal right now for Joseph Parker but it's not to say that one or two good results can't land him a lucrative long-term deal but right now as Higgins said he's a a somewhat undervalued asset so that do they want to take cents on the dollar when maybe they could stay independent fight a Chisora back in July or something like that beat him uh, maybe get another contender level win under his, his belt and then sign on to something more lucrative and for a longer term there are various options and it really depends on the deal but the clock is ticking and it sounds like one of his suitors wants an answer by Friday. What do you make of it all? What do you think he will do? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.